This video represents the unaffiliated efforts of the authors. While material from this video may be adopted by other organizations, it should be clear that it is supported by low-quality evidence, expert opinion, and consensus only. When a patient in the pre-hospital setting is identified as a suspected or confirmed COVID-19 case, the attending EHS crew must notify the hospital as soon as possible. Medic 186 on route to location with a 35-year-old male, uh, presumptive COVID case. The charge physician will confirm with the crew that they will be met in the ambulance bay on arrival. The goal of this is to confirm the clinical severity of the patient and that proper precautions are taken to avoid aerosolization. Remember, provider safety is the number one priority. New guidelines recommend that a peripheral oxygen saturation for COVID-19 patients of 85% and above is acceptable. Patients who require supplemental oxygen may receive it in one of four ways, paying close attention to the maximum recommended flow rate for each. The four options include 1. Nasal prongs with overlying surgical mask with flow rates of 5 liters per minute or less. 2. A filtered non-rebreather with flow rates of 15 liters per minute or less. 3. A CPAP with filter attachment with flow rates of 15 liters per minute or less. Or 4. A BVM with filter attachment with flow rates of 15 liters per minute or less. There is concern that use of CPAP or BVM at such low flow rates may cause smothering or agitation of the patient. If the patient becomes agitated, use of CPAP or BVM is not recommended due to an increased risk of aerosolization. In these patients, it is our recommendation that escalation of oxygen therapy should begin with nasal prongs set to 5 liters per minute and then, if needed, adding an NRBM at up to 15 liters per minute. This will allow for precautions to remain at droplet only during transit and be far more comfortable for the patient. We do not recommend pharmacological behavior modification therapy in the pre-hospital setting for COVID-19 patients. If the patient is receiving oxygen via CPAP or BVM, they will require an exchange of the pre-hospital filter for an HME filter provided by the charge physician prior to entering the emergency department. Once the HME filter is acquired, ensure that O2 flow is reduced to zero liters per minute prior to removing the mask from the patient's face to minimize risk of aerosolization. Once the filter has been changed and secured, the flow can be then increased. Similarly, if the patient is being transitioned from nasal prongs to an oxygen delivery system with an HME filter, the oxygen flow must be turned off prior to removing the nasal prongs from the patient's face. It is the responsibility of the charge physician to liaise with the CTL to determine which of the pre-designated rooms the patient will be brought to. Patients who are low or moderate risk remain on droplet precautions for the duration of transport. Patients are low risk if they do not require supplemental oxygen and are considered moderate risk if they are on nasal prongs with flow rates of 5 liters per minute or less or on face masks with flow rates of less than 15 liters per minute. If the patient is deemed high risk, meaning a respiratory rate of 30 breaths per minute or more, requiring flow rates exceeding the recommended guidelines, requiring CPAP or BVM support, or clinical gestalt predicts the need for endotracheal intubation. It is the responsibility of the charge physician to ensure the route to the designated room is clear of personnel and that all closable doors en route are closed for the duration of transit. Both paramedics donned an appropriate PPE will transport the patient to the designated room. On arrival, they will give handover to the accepting team in the patient's room. The paramedics will then exit the room and head back to the ambulance bay by the direct route they came from with their contaminated stretcher. 
There, they will begin to doff their PPE as per EHS protocol. Clinical care will be adjusted as more is learned about ways to improve provider safety and optimize patient care. It is imperative for all clinicians to read and adhere to the clinical advisories that are released.